What's up, guys? This is James White with Freakin' Reviews, bringing you as seen on TV product reviews, gadget reviews, and more. Now, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so for more videos like this. Now, if you're new to this channel, this is one of my update videos. So, what I do is I go back and look at 10 prior products that I reviewed and give you a recap and also give you a chance to see what's changed since my original review. So, if you missed the original, this is a good chance to see how that went. If you did see the original, this will also hopefully let you know if anything has changed since then. Now this is a pretty ripe batch of products. Three of them appeared in my worst of 2018 and two of them appeared in my best of 2018. There's a lot going on right here. So without further ado, items number 151 through 160 right now. My 151st product review was the Tac Light versus the Tac Light Elite. Now the Tac Light died during my comparison. Actually, I broke it. Oh. No! It stopped working! So that left the Tacolite Elite. And I will say this is my go-to flashlight. I don't use the lantern feature that much. There is a lantern feature on there. I mainly use it just as a regular flashlight. Uh, once in a while it seems like it starts flickering, but otherwise it's held up pretty well. I pretty much just use the first setting and that's it. See how it's flickering? See that? Just went off. I don't know about long term. Uh, I have a flashlight that's almost 30 years old that still works. I have a hard time believing this is going to last 30 years if it's flickering already after a matter of months. But for what it is, I think it worked pretty well. It's better than a regular tack light. Here's some scenes from my original tack light versus tack light elite video. I think the tack light has a wider field than the than the Lowe's flashlight, but the Lowe's flashlight is clearly brighter. This is Lowe's tack light, regular tack light. Okay, I got the regular tack light on the right, tack light lead. They're, they're very similar. The tack light is a little bit brighter, but they both illuminate all the way to the other end of my yard, which is quite a ways down there. That is kind of nice. So if, if the lantern feature appeals to you, this is definitely a good option for you. I should also point out that the tack light elite has a magnetic base, so you can stick it to metal objects. It's a feature the other tack lights do not have, which is a pretty cool feature. Number 152 is the Measure King, which is a digital tape measure that ended up on my worst of 2018 list. Now, why did I put it on the worst of list? Because it's not always accurate. Sometimes it doesn't even give you a measurement at all. And when you need uh, accurate measurements, this is not the item to use. It might give you a rough idea, but I, I try to use this quite a bit. Even in other reviews, people start asking me, why are you using that thing when it's not even accurate? And, they were right, so I stopped using it. But here's some scenes from my original Measure King review. Error. Hold it down. Boom, 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 boom. 16 and 3 sixteenths. Whoa, I don't know about that. That doesn't seem accurate to me. Right on the 24 and shine it right over there. 180, 194 inches, that is not correct. 27 and a half inches. It's not right. Nice, it's not working. I knew I didn't give this a good review for a reason. Come on. Oh. All right, next up on the list is Arctic Air. This is advertised as a personal space cooler. You add water and you're gonna get cool air. Now this one ended up on my worst of list for one main reason, and that's that the advertising hype clearly overstated what this can actually do. It does put out colder air when there's water in here, but the problem is that it doesn't really have a very powerful fan. So when you have it next to just a regular floor fan, the difference in power of the fan kind of compensates for the cooler air in here, so it's not really much different. And this is 40 bucks. Now, I live in Las Vegas. We have some hot summers out here. I've got a nice big floor fan, and this thing pales in comparison as far as how much air it moves. Obviously, everybody is gonna be different as far as how useful this is to me. I didn't really feel like it was worth the investment. But here's some scenes from my original Arctic Air review. All right, it's been about five minutes, and it's dropped five degrees. Oh, look at that. 97 degrees, it's, got, it's dropped five degrees in three minutes. It doesn't have a huge range, like I'm holding it, like I'm holding it over here, and I don't really feel it that much. You kind of need to be pretty close to it to really get much of a benefit from it. I do feel it, but it's only a foot away from me. I still feel it, it's a couple feet away, but I don't feel it as strong. All right, it's time for some emo hair here. Let's see which fan is stronger with the hair test. The Walmart fan is stronger, but the Arctic Air is cooler.
This is the Copper Chef Perfect Egg Maker. It's the 154th product that I reviewed and it can make up to 14 hard boiled eggs at one time. This made my best of list for 2018 because it's a small compact device. You don't have to wait for water to boil. It's kind of a set it and forget it type of thing. And I found that it works pretty well. In fact, I've used it quite a few times since my original review. I'm still happy with the results. You can make a small number of eggs, make a large number of eggs. Um, it's really kind of simple device. It doesn't take up a lot of room on the counter, so it's something that I leave out and I use regularly. Here are some clips from my original Copper Chef Perfect Egg Maker. Okay, we've got 14 beautiful eggs in here, all punctured with the holes facing up. I got the water in the bottom and I put the cherry on top. All right, well, that was actually very easy to peel. I got to give him credit for that. I mean, I think they came out pretty nice. They peeled nicely, they came out nicely. Next up is the chill chest. This is advertised as an iceless cooler. You don't need any ice and it supposedly keeps all your food cool. Well, there's a couple things that are wrong with this. Number one, it's black, so when you have it sitting outside, it's gonna be absorbing all the sun. I compared it to a regular cooler and didn't really find much of a difference. The only difference is that this one will leak if you have ice in there, so you really can't use ice unless you put it in bags. I had a couple occasions where I needed coolers over the summer. I didn't use a chill chest because I wanted one that didn't leak, so I used one of my regular ones. I don't really think it's worth the hype. I don't get it, sorry. Here's some scenes from my original chill chest review. All right, so I'm carrying the chill chest, and there, you can see the handle right there. It doesn't, it's not real deep. Oh, oh. It's not completely melted, but that didn't, well, you can, Brandon, you can have this one. But the thing is, is the chill chest is not watertight, which means it's not airtight, but it's not watertight. So if you put ice in there and it melts, it's gonna go all over where it's sitting. All right, we're five hours in. I've been using the chill chest all day long next to this regular cooler. And it seems like the results are pretty similar. I don't see a huge advantage of it. 53 degrees, 54 degrees. Once again, it's slightly warmer, but pretty close. Safe for tuna casseroles like 135, this is 92 degrees. This is a car visor, and on this car visor used to be the tack visor, which is the next item that I reviewed. A tack visor is the military inspired car visor that made my worst of 2018 list. And there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, in no particular order. And one is that as you moved it up and down, it tended to get a lot of fingerprints on it. It also had a reflection where I was seeing any kind of light colored clothing. Also, uh, it started to bow as the heat heated up here in Las Vegas. I don't know if it's the extreme heat from Vegas here, but the tack visor is starting to bow if you see that. Look at that. To the point where when I closed it one time, it actually broke in a bunch of pieces. That's why I don't have it anymore because Someone saw a pile of mangled plastic and tossed it, so I don't have my tack visor anymore. I think it was a good idea, not well executed, but here are some scenes from my original tack visor review. This is the tack visor, the day-night car visor that lets you see clearly without the glare. So that's how it works. You pull down once for the daytime panel, push that back up if you want to get the night panel down here. Both cases, I'm finding a little bit of a problem with fingerprints, which that may or may not be a problem for you. With the tack visor, and without. So that's behind the car, this reflection right here. And here's a pair of sunglasses. Similar, I would say. So if you're short, you may not get the full benefit of the tack visor. Number 157 is the Nutra Slicer. This is a vegetable and fruit slicer. It does a really good job. I found that it kind of worked as advertised, actually maybe even better than I expected. There's one problem that I found since my original review, and that's that it's kind of a large device. Taking it out, using it, and then cleaning it and putting it away, it didn't always seem like the benefit it provided was worth the amount of effort and the counter space it was taken up. So unfortunately, even though I liked it, it ended up here in the boneyard. The rest of my ASEAN TV stuff I don't use. It's rare, but sometimes a product that I like still ends up here if I don't find it that useful. If you like the advertising, I think you'll like it. Just for me, it didn't seem like it was worth the counter space. Here's some scenes from my original Nutra Slicer review. The other feature I should point out is that you push this lever down and it sticks to the counter. It's coming out. Oh, is that strange for an apple slice? 
You know, some are more complete. It just depends on which angle the apple goes in there. The only thing though is you really can't adjust the thickness, which I guess that may or may not be a problem. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh, wow. So to me, this one for 20 bucks is the most versatile of the three cheaper ones. This is Atomic Angel. It's the motion activated light. It's battery powered. Now it's worked pretty well. You can see these batteries are getting pretty dim here. I need to change them out. But here's the problem. It's this, the tape backing. See that? It's getting kind of loose. I haven't touched this thing hardly at all since I put it up here, but it's definitely not in very good shape. It feels like it's going to fall off. That's, that's what the tape looks like. So I'm not sure if that's going to be a long-term solution. It's been here seven months. I don't know if it's going to make it much longer. But here's some scenes from my original Atomic Angel review. You can position it this way. And then as you can see right here, this base spins so you can rotate it that way as well. So even though it's only about 12 feet deep, it has a pretty wide range, which I think is pretty good. This is the Atomic Angel. This is the Atomic Beam Tap Light. They're very similar. This is the Atomic Angel. This is the Atomic Tap Light. Good girl. You want to smell it? Oh, we're barely sniffing it. <laughs> She's taking the cameraman. Overall, I think that it works about as advertised. It's a bright light. The motion sensor seems pretty sensitive. I think it works pretty well. For number 159, excuse me while I whip this out. It's the Core Trackline belt. This is a ratchet belt that I compared with the Comfort Click belt, which is kind of the assy on TV version that I reviewed a long time ago. This one made my best of list because this is a very nice belt. Not only is the ratchet feature quite useful, let me show you that. So when you want to adjust it, you just lift this lever. It has a lot of micro adjustments on there. This one's well made, it's an attractive belt. It's easy to set up and it's easy to use. I wear this every single day. I think that the Trackline belt is probably maybe the gold standard in this category. It certainly is one of the top ratchet belts out there. Here are some scenes from my original review and comparison of the Core Trackline belt. I believe you have 32 on the Comfort Click belt and 44 in the Core Essentials, which gives you more flexibility for adjusting it. Supposedly, you can use this as a bottle opener. And again, you can't pull it back until you lift this lever. Uh, this is a little bit more expensive than this is. It's also a little bit better made than this is. Would you take kind of the cheaper ASEAN TV version with less options or the better made Kickstarter version with more options? Oh, hi there. I was just cleaning the floors here with my in and out mop, which is the next item that I reviewed. It's a two chamber mop that allows you to clean and dry the mop head as you go. And I found that it worked pretty well. And in fact, it's held up pretty well. There's the mop head. I think it's no, I mean, it's certainly worn, but it's still held up. Whenever I need to mop, this is my go-to system. So I think that it was a pretty good investment. Here's some scenes from my original in and out mop review. Next up is the in and out mop versus in and out catch up. First time you're doing it, you're just getting the soapy water on there, so that's good. And then you're just gonna wring it out in here, and the water comes back in. It's great when the water's clean. How about when the water's dirty? Boom. Oh, but look at this, nasty. It smells like ketchup in here. Now what we're supposed to do is put it in here to clean this off. That's kind of that's kind of gross. They say the more times you put it through there, the cleaner it's going to get. And I want it to be pretty clean. That looks pretty clean. Okay, we're going to wring this out. It's working. It's getting it out. All right, so that's it. That's all I've got. Numbers 151 through 160. Obviously hits and misses with every batch of 10 that I do. I would say the best of would be the Trackline belt and the Perfect Egg Cooker. Worst of, got a couple of them. Maybe the Measure King jumps out as one of the worst to me, but your mileage certainly may vary. If you want to see the original reviews, I got links below. If you want to purchase them, I've got links below. 
But tell me what you think about these items in the comments below. Check out my social profiles for progress pictures, videos as I go, also my new Patreon page. I'll be back in another couple months for my next batch of 10 to see how those products are holding up. Please subscribe for more product reviews from me, James White, with Freakin' Reviews. All right, a couple of these are going back to the boneyard. Arctic air, back to the boneyard. Chill chest on top of the my pillow box. Ugh. The boneyard is now complete once again.